Hey, 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 this is Carrington with Real Dudes Podcast. You are listening to Play Comics Podcast on the Brain Trust Network. And welcome to Play Comics, a show where we look at video games based on comic properties and how well they stick to that source material. I'm Chris, and today I'm joined by Doug. Doug, how are you? Uh, I am doing wonderful. How about yourself? It's way too early in the morning to look at LJN, but we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. little peek behind the curtain here, timing-wise. We're recording this the weekend that Deadpool came out. So I'm right after we finished recording this, I'm going to go out and watch Deadpool. Yep, watching Deadpool later this evening, and it's going to be awesome. I'm excited for it. And I really don't mind bringing up Deadpool in this, because today we're talking about Wolverine for NES. Not a bad game. Not a bad game. Not a good game, but not a bad game. (laughs) Oh, we'll get into that. But first, we need to make sure people actually understand who Wolverine is, you know, in case they've lived under a rock for the past 50 years. Right? Was I would say the biggest, like... To non-comic book fans, Wolverine really entered the mainstream 2002 with X-Men, correct? That's about where I'd put it, On too. the year. Or from the cartoon in the 90s. I See, I think that's when, like, every 90s kid knew who Wolverine was, and then everyone else learned who Hugh Jackman's Wolverine was. And then that became the X-Men for 15 years? Oh, God, I can't believe it's been that long. That made my head hurt. Why did I mention 15 I years of of that? And it's really sad because uh, Logan, last year's, I'm trying to think, was it last year or was it early this year? That was last year. That was Hugh Jackman's last role as Wolverine. And that kind of hurts my heart a little bit. I'm still holding out hope for one little thing now that Marvel can use X-Men in all the Marvel movies. If Wolverine pops up in Deadpool this afternoon, I'm going to lose my mind. Because I heard there's supposed to be some, like, superhero cameos and things like that. So I'm like, okay, if Wolverine pops up or Spider-Man, I'm going to lose my mind. One of the most interesting things I think about Wolverine is that he started out just kind of as a Hulk villain. That's right. I know. Everybody sitting there, like, Wolverine with the X-Men or Wolverine with his little Victorian-era origin, if you want to go that way, depending on when you pick it up. But the first appearance was, like, a little cameo spot in an issue of the Hulk. And then full on after that. Huh. So I would completely forgot about that. I originally placed him in, uh, like, the Victorian era. I completely forgot about the Hulk. It's just so cool how interconnected everything is. I mean, Marvel Comics is good for that, as I feel like uh, Stanley and Jack Kirby were not just writing this as they were going along. This was their 70-year plan of, uh, we're pretty much going to make every character talk to every character and kind of hang out. Thus, making especially Wolverine with his long life, because that is one of his abilities because of his healing factor, he just talks to everybody. He's with everybody at any given time. I don't know. Wolverine in the Civil War, Wolverine in World War Two with Cap and Bucky. You, he, you just can't get him away from anybody. No. And I think that's what makes him such a cool character because he's just... He's the old guy who hangs out with all these little kids comparatively to him and is just kind of tired of it. And so he's a lot more aggressive, a lot more just, I'm done, I kind of want to get this over with and go back to taking a nap. He's Ron Swanson if Ron Swanson had superheroes. Ron Swanson with knives taped to his hands. Oh, no. No, no. It would be the best thing ever. Yeah, I I want to see that now. I kind of do. So, what do you know of his powers? Like, I know we've mentioned that he has the uh, healing factor, but he has the bone claws, which I'm glad they got rid of the bone claws because... Right. Uh, just looking at them from the Wolverine movie, the awful Wolverine movie, those bone claws looked 
grody. The, uh, they looked awful. I would not want those sticking out of my hands. Oh, there's the adamantium skeleton that Weapon X went and put in him. That is a beautiful move, I think, because it makes him able to survive pretty much anything and gives him the good claws. I'm always constantly wondering, is adamantium uh, magnetic? You'd think so. And you'd think at some point Magneto would kind of test that out and find out. I mean, we've seen that in the X-Men for 2002, where it kind of picks Wolverine up and on the uh, train to get Rogue. But then that's really the last we kind of see of this Magneto affecting Wolverine as such. Which actually kind of bothers me, because it's a metal man fighting the man who controls metal. That shouldn't be a... A thing. Maybe they got lucky and it's just a metal that happens to not be magnetic. It's ma- It's the magic metal. Marvel's good with magic metals. It goes right along with magnetism being able to do basically whatever you want in 60s Marvel. It, it kind of was, wasn't it? I forgot that pretty much Magneto could do whatever the comics wanted him to do because spooky magnets. I will control your body because your blood has iron in it. Because magnetism. And then the iron affects your brain, and yeah. But that was really awesome, though. Because it kind of gave that magic, but not magic. I know there's Wolverine's weird ability to smell things. Whether that's because an actual power, or just because he's been around so long he knows how to smell for things, I don't know. I think that just comes from his tracking days before the Revolutionary War. I don't, so I don't think it's like a... X-Men power, I think it's just one of those he's been around long enough to realize, hey, you can do these things. Or, you know, whatever the writers want it to be at this time. He's got this super convoluted history that changes up so much, but it fits into the storyline somehow why it's changing up so much, because you never really know what's a real memory with him and what's not. Yeah, and I think that's what makes him such a cool hero, because he's such a blank slate on occasion. I mean, if we go back to, I know I keep mentioning it, but the 2002 X-Men, especially for Hugh Jackman's first role into film, that was a really good role for him. He pretty much had to be aggressive. That's literally it. There's not a range of emotion for Wolverine in that film specifically. He starts off cranky, ends less cranky. That's really about it. Because of his past. Which is an interesting change from the comics, because in the comics you have, like, the Wolverine, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Love Triangle going. You have Wolverine somehow not creepily being the mentor for all these teenage girls that join up with the X-Men. As long as we rule out the Ultimates comics, Wolverine's pretty on the up and up. The Ultimates comics made him so creepy. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't even, like... I don't collect the Ultimates because I don't like how the characters are portrayed. But when you can somehow have a guy that can be friends with Kitty Pride and be friends with Jubilee, and oh yeah, he's like 300 years older than them, but not being the creepy old man, I think that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, especially because the, the comics came out late 60s, correct? Right. Especially because how comics were drawn and how just the social interactions between people were different and how they were written he could have been way creepier and nobody would have had a problem with it back then at all oh no we we would have looked back on and go ooh that's super not okay but yeah i mean wolverine definitely one of my top 5 x-men definitely up there with me too but I don't know. I really like Wolverine. He's a good character. He's well-written, and he plays well for the screen. He has powers that are easily showable, easily identifiable, and you can show Wolverine to pretty much anybody and go, who's this character? Uh, That's Wolverine. No matter whether you're talking the new trilogy, Days of Future Past, or the 2002 to 2000. A, with Last Stand, Mm -hmm. you can show Wolverine to anybody, and that is Wolverine. That's their Wolverine. And I've talked to a few people, and they're so surprised that Wolverine wasn't in X-Men from the start, because 
when you think of X-Men, it's pretty much Wolverine and whoever else is with him from everybody that I talk to. Wolverine and the gang, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I completely forgot that he was a Hulk villain until you had actually brought him up, and I was like, wait a second, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't even there with X-Men until they rebooted it the first time. How many times has X-Men been rebooted at this point? Way too many. Yeah. I'm trying to think, well, we went to the Ultimates, we went to the... Yeah, I can't even... It's too early to think about that, actually. Marvel's history is kind of weird. Even back at the beginning of it, there's regular X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, where Wolverine started popping up, um, New Mutants, and I'm sure he popped up in there at some point. I haven't read too much of them. X-Force. It gets insane. All the... I remember all the 70s, 60s X puns, like Excalibur, X-Force. It was kind of unbearable trying to sort your comics. But, yeah, I forget that X-Men has kind of been rebooted so many different times just because of all the characters. Uh, And even when they're not rebooting, they're retconning so much stuff. Which, I'm not going to lie, I know we're talking about Marvel, but I kind of respect DC for that by saying, here's Rebirth. Everything before that is... Void until we say it counts. Until then, these are just cool stories. We will add the stories back to the canon as we see fit. Which made my collection of DC comics way easier. Yeah, I've always been more of a Marvel guy. Well, I think I have to go, Nano. (laughs) I mean, I like DC, but it's just... When I was young picking characters, I just happened to pick characters that were all Marvel that I liked. Oh yeah, I will definitely say I got more into DC Comics uh, as an active adult because I really think the best way to describe the difference between Marvel and DC Comics is Marvel is men being gods. DC is gods being men. And it's really interesting to see that struggle when you have like Superman who wants to be a human being, whereas... Someone like Iron Man is trying to be Iron Man, and it's just a role reversal of we want to be normal, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I, I mean, I never heard it put that way, but it makes so much sense, I'm surprised I hadn't. Which goes back to Wolverine. He started off as a normal kid who had a normal childhood, I guess, with... I'm not sure, was his father abusive towards him, or was he just like... A normal kid. I mean, look into Victorian era stuff, too. It's hard to say what's abusive and what's just normal. Which definitely makes things a little bit weirder when you're trying to describe it. But it's he's a normal kid. He's just a dude up until he joins the uh, X-Men, really. And then X, the uh, Weapon X, X Project. And at that point, once he gets the adamantium, then he really kicks off into the Wolverine era. Because before that, he was just, you know, Logan. Just a dude who couldn't get hurt, which is so cool. Right? And I'm really glad that they brought that back with uh, Logan, which, I'm not going to lie, Logan made me openly cry. And very few movies have done that. Somehow, and I realize this is going to make you want to leave, I haven't seen that one. And I don't know why. I'm not going to judge you. I didn't see it in theaters because it's like, I know, one, I know that all the characters, things are going to happen. Have Have you been spoiled for the movie? Have you gotten spoilers? I, I don't think so. Then I'm just going to stop right there. I would say, honestly, if you have Google, buy it on Google Play with the X-Men, the uh, Logan Noir, and you can watch it twice. Once in regular color, then once in black and white. The black and white, so crisp, and it totally drives home all the emotions. I'll definitely need to do that. Because I watched it back to back. I like Me and my fiancé, we watched uh, Lego Batman, and we're like, cool, well, let's watch Logan. We completely watched them in the wrong order, because we're both sitting there just like, okay, some things happened. So we're both kind of like sitting there sniffling, like, if we don't look at each other, we don't have to acknowledge the other is crying and really have that moment. But it was great. Great movie. Definitely go watch it. 
So what are like your favorite Wolverine centric storylines from the comics? Right now I'm enjoying the old man Logan. I'm going back through that one completely different than the movie. Completely different from Wolverine. Like his character. It starts off with, can I spoil the comic? Cause the comic's like a couple years old at this point. Yeah. Have at it. Mysterio tricks Wolverine and Wolverine kills all the X-Men. And so he refuses to become Wolverine again and just starts living as Logan and eventually gets married, has a kid and the world has gone to, it's gone bananas. Like Red Skull has killed Captain America and taken Captain America's suit. The Hulk has now weird redneck inbred kids and they're the uh, the Hulk clan or something like that. And it's just such a weird comic. Like, Old Man Hawkeye shows up, and it ends really differently than I ever expected. Because, like, I've read it, I've read the synopsis, and I'm like, I'm going to read this. Read it, and I'm like, that did not go where I thought it would. But I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to have to check that one out. How about yourself? Any uh, good Wolverines? I like to start at the beginning of things, and a lot of my reading has been kind of keeping up with where I am listening to Jay and Miles explain the X-Men. Um, have you read the Marvel Ronin series? I haven't. I, I didn't even know that one existed. It's a thing. Wolverine is a wandering samurai, along with Deadpool, Hulk, and Psylocke. Oh shit, that sounds amazing. <laughs> I read that when I was sitting in class at this point seven years ago, which, remind me, I'm getting old. So seven years ago, I was in college and uh, reading Marvel Ronin in the back of class. It was great. Wow. I have no recollection of that class. I can tell you that was a great comic, though. And then I you know, shared it with my next-door neighbor because he sat next to me in class, and half the class read the comic by the end of the semester. It was great. Sounds like the best class ever. I, I don't even remember what the class was. Like, for the entire semester, it was just... it. I remember going to class, reading the comic books, and then that was the end of class. And somehow I got my degree. Wow. Mm, wow. But yeah, uh, definitely go back and read that. That's one of my favorites. And I'm trying to think of what the other one was. There's Neil Gaiman's series where... It's Marvel in the, I don't want to say Renaissance, but it's a weird Renaissance. Forget the title of it. I'll have to look the title up later. Yeah, I've, I know in some of the cartoons and stuff, I've seen people talking about that like for an episode or two. It's, it, I like those bubble universes where you can read the collection, nod to yourself, yeah, that was a good comic, and then not have to worry about it touching the canon. All right, well, with that... We'll drop a promo for another show and then come back and talk about this wonderful game for regular Nintendo. Experience Dungeons and Dragons like you've never experienced before. So girls, tell us about Dave. So tell me Dave's how great I am. Dave's a little drunk and all. Feel the tension. We like some chips. They don't have any chips. Feel the excitement. 29 more javelins. You gonna throw another javelin? Well, 29 more. Duh. Epic storytelling. This island, as all the locals know, is the island of Atlantis, and you are not welcome here. And with no swearing or profanity of any kind. Ah, uh, jeez. <laughs> this is Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters. Find out more at DungeonsDragonsDaughters.podbean.com, your favorite podcast service or preferred social site. We're also on YouTube. And that was a great show you should check out, but first, finish up with this one. So, Doug, I can't believe I put you through this torture, but what did you think of this game? Well, at first, I was just going to be content watching it on YouTube through one of the long play channels, but then I was like, mm, no, I'm actually going to play this game. I don't hate this game. It's a very NES game, and anybody who played the NES knows... What I'm talking about, it's like that weird platforming, your character controls like a tank, but they go exactly where you want them to go, and they have that right difficulty of 
I'm going to smash the controller against the screen and, you know, it's my fault, I just suck at platformers. And I really enjoy some of the mechanics, actually. Have you played this game? I have, and I'm completely in the opposite direction from you. What? I might have been going into it with the wrong mindset, seeing as how it's an LJN game, and I have basically hated every single one that we've covered here so far. All right, you've, you've, you've said LJN. Just to make sure, uh, what is LJN? LJN is the company that published this game. Okay. I it was thought a, it was something different. No, it was a fake little offshoot of Acclaim so that Acclaim could get around the limit that Nintendo put on how many games a company could release a year. Oh, uh, because that Nintendo seal of quality or whatever it was called. Yeah, they were trying to keep the game bubble from bursting again and make people think, I should probably put out good games instead of a giant quantity of crap and just hope people buy it. But they would go create fake companies all over the place to get around it. I wish I had would have thought about that if I had been creating games during that time. That would be... Like, that's, an, that's insanely genius. I had thought about the people doing that. But, so you didn't like it because it's an LJN. Well... I went into it with super low expectations, expecting to not like it. Like, I'm not going to sit there and if it was a legitimately good game, then yeah, you know, I'm not going to hate it just because it's LJN. And eventually I'm going to get to some good ones that people do actually like. But I went into this expecting something bad. See, I watched a little bit of it and I'm like, I'm going to play it just to get a hang of the, the graphics, like how I how I like it, not how I like watching it. The thing about it is, because I do like it because it's difficult, Wolverine games, in my opinion, should not be easy. Because if you uh, if you hit select, you actively pop out your claws, and you can kill most enemies, like most fluff enemies in the stage with one hit, but it hurts you for one point each time you use your claws. That was actually one of the big problems I had with it, because I don't see the point of having Wolverine with his claws if you can't really use his claws all the time. Especially combined with the fact that there's no real healing factor in the game. Because I'm totally down with, like, the claws hurt you, it takes away stuff, but your health gradually builds back up. That was going to be my complaint. There's no healing factor. We went, we've went. we got the point where, yes, his claws burst out of his skin. That should hurt. But then we completely forgot it doesn't hurt because he heals it. So they completely forgot that healing factor part of the game. But they did include weird things like sodas and hamburgers refuel him. And it's like, what? It, you're doing Wolverine. It should be like cigars. Something like that. I just assumed it was all beer. It, the, the official guide said soda and hamburgers. And it's like, really censoring? Really? That's what we're doing today? But another thing that I really liked was the... Uh, berserker meter that when you used your claws enough you would go crazy with your claws it was weird but i I really enjoyed that mechanic of it really captured wolverine's bloodlust in a way of he keeps using his claws but it it makes his claws stronger i should say the whole having to use them to get used to using them so that you can use them even more just makes perfect sense there. Yeah. And I think if a game like this were to be made today and not like this, but like a Wolverine game, it would be done a whole lot better. And so I, I'm not going to fault it for being a nineties game because this game came out in 91. So I'm not going to like ding it because it was, it kind of looked ugly. It's play style was good, but there's definitely better 91 and earlier games. Think uh, Star Tropics for the NES, or like Zelda. But there's definitely more it could have done, especially because Wolverine was getting to be a popular character back then. The, the game's story is he's been captured by Magneto and Sabretooth and stranded on an island. That is the most generic game ever. But that's what you got back then. I mean, that's honestly one of the reasons why I'm going kind of chronologically with this, because I don't want to sit there and compare this to anything PS3, PS4, because inevitably you're going to get down to this game doesn't do things that it couldn't do because it's on NES. 
but I still would say that it can do better. Oh, yeah. Because Bionic Commando is on the NES. Uh, Blaster Master was on the NES. And those are great games that had a great storyline. But even skipping over to another platformer, Metroid. Metroid started you up and there's no story, basically. And it felt like a better game, a better platformer than Wolverine, which Wolverine should be able to beat Metroid any day. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't really have a problem with the lack of story in this one. Wolverine's in a place and goes crazy. I mean, really, what more did you need? I think I would have had him escaping Weapons X into, like, a snowy territory, fighting Sabretooth, fight Magneto, end of the game, joins up with the X-Men. It's th- the same level of generic game, but then you can kind of relate it into the comic books. I mean, speaking of relating it to the comic books, too, this just seemed, this screams to me that they had a game they were working on and then said, oh yeah, we should make it a Wolverine game. Yeah. Because these enemies, except for Sabretooth and Magneto, I there's no connection at all that I'm seeing. To anything Marvel. They kind of reminded me of Pepsi Man. If you remember that game. Oh yeah. That's been a while. And so like I, I booted it up. Played it. And I'm like. These are. Gen- like. It feels like. These should have had texture put on them. And made to look like something else. Like. Kind of paint them purple. Make them look more robotic. They give their the Sentinels. Ha ha. We've done it. Here's like. A bodysuit that's white. Okay, what am I fighting here? The dummies from Smash Brothers, I guess. Uh, those are wireframes. Wait, you're right. The metal, the uh, metal Mario challenges. I forgot. I mean, there are some random other characters that show up. Um, Jubilee pops up to give you some scuba gear. Which what? That that confused me. Jubilee giving scuba gear. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The only thing I can think of is that she was becoming a popular character and they wanted to pop her in. I feel like they keep trying to make Jubilee a thing, but Jubilee's not a thing, it feels like. Like, I know they wanted to include her in the newest X-Men film, not Logan, but uh, Days of Future Past. It's like, no one cares about Jubilee. Like, I like the fact they wanted to put her in because Jubilee's like, ah, it's Jubilee, but... Jubilee's useless. Or am I thinking of Dazzler? Either way, you've got a really underused character that has never really had a good opportunity to be shown what they can do because everybody just writes them off. They're kind of like the Aquaman until they do something really cool. Yeah. The only thing they're lacking there is the completely stupid, totally useless power. I mean, Jubilee throws little bits of energy. It's useful. It's, It's useful in the right conditions. But they never really showed her to be... They never showed her using her power usefully, I should say. And I will say, Marvel has created some awful X-Men. And awful mutants. Such awful things. But, like, going back to this game... The potential's game, it's definitely not, there. They just need to do it right. I would still say... I would, If I were to find this at Goodwill, I would totally pick this up. But if this were back in the day and I rented it from Blockbuster, I would be so oh, yeah. irritated. This is one of the ones I was never able to actually see out of the flea market when I used to go out there every weekend. And I always kind of wanted to find it, because if nothing else, it just looks good on the shelf. Oh, yeah. Especially that nice, crisp, uh, that hard plastic Nintendo sleeve that you could put your little cartridges in and put on the shelf. Those were the greatest things ever. And it makes a good collection, especially if you are an X-Men fan. Include it with your X-Men games and your comic books and all that. And it's only two games to have a complete NES X-Men collection, so why not? What was the other one? I forget. Uncanny X-Men? Hmm. It's really bad. I was, I don't, I've never played it. It's an Akari Warrior style thing where you can pick between Storm and Cyclops and Wolverine and Colossus. And you're just kind of going vertically up the level to get through it. And then some levels you have to work your way back down after that. Huh. And they're all going to beat Magneto and it's really bad. See, I think the only 
good X-Men games, and they're not even X-Men games, is uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Those are, those are my favorite games of the X-Men style games. Those are really good. Um, the Genesis X-Men games are pretty good. Uh, remind me later when you get up into the Marvel vs. Capcom era that I, I want to be back in the show because there's a, there's a pizza place in where I live. That there's a honest to god Marvel vs. Capcom arcade machine sitting in their lobby. And I'm looking for an excuse to go drop quarters in it. So if I can say it's research for a podcast, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to go borrow a truck and steal that. I've, I've really thought, how can I buy this game? Because I want to collect all the uh, old, a bunch of old arcade machines. I have a list. And a Dance Dance Revolution machine. But it's unrelated. Oh, so you're your homework is to go talk to them and see how much it would take to let them sell it to you. Uh, the average arcade machine is about over $1,000 because the Arcade Expo was here a couple months ago, and they are a bit pricey. Totally worth it for that one. I don't know if there's a Galaga machine that would be great, too. I'm probably going to end up building one and just putting emulators in it because I'm that kind of horrible person. So I don't think that's a horrible person. I think that's the right kind of person. Because it makes, it drives down the prices of our games. I've also got the same ROM files that I picked up in middle school, back when that was the only way I was going to get this, and there was no way Nintendo or any of the publishers could get any money from it, because it was download the emulators or buy the games used. Yeah. And of course the games were never used in good condition, it was always like yellow nicotine stained cartridge that you had to like put two pennies on top of it. It was never a good cartridge. But getting back to this, um, Psylocke pops up long enough to give you something so that you can call Havoc so that he can come and restore some of your energy. Why does Wolverine need somebody else to come in and restore some health for him? I was going to ask why the convoluted kind of call Psylocke to call Havoc. That's weird. Uh, I know. Now, it would make infinitely more sense if find Havoc, he'll call. he'll help you call Cyclops. Or call Cyclops and he'll get Havoc. Or, you know, have someone like that and open up a side path or things like that. That would have made sense. Psylocke and Havoc, those two characters I don't think talk in the comic books. I've got no idea why they made that connection. Unless they're just trying to not use characters that they used in the other one, besides Wolverine. Unless they meant Cyclops, because Psylocke and Cyclops... Yeah, maybe there's some sort of confusion there. I can see that. And so like, oh, Psy Psylocke, got it. Made Psylocke. Oh, guys, it was supposed to be Cyclops. Gotta mess that one up there, guys. Yeah, what can you do? Yeah, but, I mean, if you were to rate this game, where, where do you think you'd put it? Like, out of five stars. Out of five, I'd probably call it a two. I was going to go about a two as well. Uh, I would waste an afternoon playing it. Maybe get a Shasta and like really off-brand candy and play that all afternoon on my NES. But uh, would not go out of my way to try to pick it up. Yeah, like it's just so off from the comics. It's so... It's the bad part of old Nintendo hard where... It's bad because, they're, sorry, it's hard because they didn't make the game well, as opposed to like Mega Man stuff where it's hard because they made the game hard. Uh, completely understandable. Um, I actually get what you mean when you say Mega Man hard because Mega Man is one of those, it's my guilty game of I am absolutely terrible at Mega Man. I love Mega Man though. And I love that classic Nintendo difficulty because it's it's meant to be played like once and take forever. But this Wolverine game was hard because it was just made poorly. It was made it felt like it was made in an afternoon in a weekend and jammed out and sent out. You know what we haven't even talked about yet? Is the ending. Oh no. I didn't get to see the ending. What goes on? Tell me more. Okay. So, at the end, you get through the whole game, all these stages, there's no boss throughout the entire game, until you get to Magneto. So Magneto 
is throwing what looks like boulders at you. And I'm assuming they're like iron lace boulders or something. So we'll, that Magneto can actually con- control them. Right. You go up and you punch the force field. And that's how you get to Magneto. And then you go punch him a couple times and he runs away. And then you have to go fight Sabretooth. But you're not really fighting him to deplete his health or his life bar. You're fighting him until you can push him off a cliff like in the Lion King game. What were they thinking about that ending? I don't know. You know who would run away from the man who's coated in metal? The man who controls metal. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Somebody didn't do any research at all. Like like you said earlier, it was a different game, but then they bought the license and were like, Wolverine, got it. And they reskinned it. That's gotta be what happened. I really want to find somebody for, that worked at LJN so I can see about all these things. That would be really cool, talking to old developers like that and be like, okay, so tell me, what happened? Why? Why was this a thing that happened? So, any other thoughts on this game before we close things out? I kind of wish that I hadn't put it into my mind and I simply believe that a Wolverine on the NES game would have been awesome to have as a kid. Yeah, it's definitely one of those. It's definitely one of those ones where if I had gotten my parents to buy it, I probably would have forced myself to like it. No, I can agree. I I can one hundred percent agree with that. And I would definitely still collect it and put it on my shelf. But I would have absolutely never put it into the NES to play it. Yep, my current owning but never gonna play in a million years game is King of Kings. From Wisdom Tree. Oh my god, that brings me back. I found somebody selling boxed <laughs> NES games for $5 a piece. And I said, thank you very much. Mine. And bought it. Is Moses. I think it was Wisdom Tree. And Spiritual Warfare. All Wisdom Tree games are that delightfully cruddy, yet awesome kind of game. They're so bad, they get to be hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah you've seen Spiritual Warfare, correct? Yeah. It's so bizarre. I kind of want to go back and play it now on my emulator. (laughs) Offshoot series. Weird religious games. Uh, What was it? Noah's Ark. Super Noah's Ark 3D, where you had to put the game in and then put an actual game on top of that to trick the system into actually playing it. Yep. How about, uh, there's a game, it was Noah's Ark. It was Escape from Egypt or something like that. And David and Goliath. It was Wisdom Tree 3 pack. I remember having that on the computer, and one of my friends would play it while me and my brother were in, like, RAs, and it was so bizarre. Because that was the time where the head didn't have, like, DRM. You had to put in a code from the inside of the CD disc uh, box. So bizarre. I remember it well. Well, we'll definitely have to get you on for a better game. <laughs> Uh, like I said, Marvel vs. Capcom, I'm going to open any time. That or one of the other Marvel fighters will definitely get you in. Cool. So, Doug, where can people find you around the internet if they want to hear more? Well, if you'd like to hear more of the podcast I'm part of, which is the Gaming and Chill podcast, you can definitely find us at on Twitter, gaming underscore in underscore chill, or you can always find us online at gamingandchillpodcast.com. Those are the two best ways to find us, because everything else branches off from there. And obviously our podcast is on... Google Play, iTunes, and SoundCloud. So that's where you can find me. You should definitely go check it out. It, it's a wonderful show. I mean, not you, because you make it, so you already know that. But everybody who's listening. Uh, I was going to say, I, I, I don't know that, because I know what goes into it, and it's like, that's about five minutes worth of writing notes, and that's pretty much my part. So, yeah. <laughs> but no. Uh, and actually, can I give a little shout-out to Tyler? Yeah. Who kind of recommended, hey... My buddy's looking for someone to be on the podcast this week. I'm like, cool. So I messaged you, or actually you messaged me, and uh, got invited to come join you today. Yeah, Tyler's a great guy. We had him on for the Flash episode. Another guy who needs to come back for a better game. I, I can I can agree, because uh, the Flash definitely deserves more love. Unfortunately, there's like nothing until Game Boy Advance that's just Flash. I would say for most comic games... Looking at the list you gave me, I'm like, there are nothing that I there there's nothing I would actively want to play as of this moment. Once we get full fledged into Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis stuff, they start getting pretty good. 
And there are some surprisingly good ones for NES. And then I will have to uh, tune in and find out which ones those are. Oh, well, I'm excited to hear that because things are going to get so much better in like 20 episodes. Nice. Game-wise, anyway, hopefully the episodes are good until we get there. Uh, I think they are right now, actually. With that, we'll drop a promo for another show, then come back and close things out. Hey there, it's Chris from More Gooder Than, where we rate and dissect pop culture one argument at a time. I'm joined by my compadres, Corey Sasso. What it is, Home Trees. And Donnie the Big D Car. Que mas? For those of you that would be joining us for the first time, Corey, Donnie, and I each take the side of some piece of pop culture and try and sway the world to agree with our opinions on which one is most goodest, with a 100% money-back guarantee to entertain you in the process. So we've done which is goodest out of the Indiana Jones trilogy. We've also covered the twin film phenomenon like Armageddon and Deep Impact. We've also compared and contrasted excellent Bill Paxton performances. So if that's something that you guys like to enjoy, check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, and our website, mgtpodcast.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, at mgtpodcast. Thanks. Thanks again to Doug for coming on the show today. Gaming and Chill is it's a wonderful show. Him and his brother do a great job with that. You should certainly go check it out. Thanks also to More Gooder Than and Dungeons and & Dragons and & Daughters. Another couple of great shows you should go check out. Also, to Best Day for making the wonderful music that we have here, you can check out his stuff over at SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash best-day. Play Comics is part of the Brain Trust Network, where you can hear such wonderful shows as Oh No Lit Class, Life, Death, and Taxonomy, Banana Split, There Might Be Cupcakes, and of course me, but you already knew that one. Thanks also to Philip Primo for helping edit with this one, because he had a lot more time than I had this week. Couldn't have done it without you, buddy. If you like our show here, then, you know, go tell a friend. Leave some reviews at all your favorite podcast places that actually accept reviews. Just make sure people know about it. You can find us over on Twitter at PlayComicsCast or at PlayComics.com. But other than that, just grab a game, grab a stack of comics, and go find yourself a new favorite character. is brought to you in part by the Brain Trust Brothers Network. For more information about this podcast or others, visit braintrustbros.com.